Hi guys, the newly minted deputy leader of the Conservative Party, or as I like to call him, the House of Commons hooligan, Jonathan Gullis, appeared on the Sophie Ridge show where he demonstrated his ability to deal with facts. Ridge challenged the Tory MP on the Rwanda bill, which he had abstained from voting for recently. Gullis instead wanted to blame the Labour Party for the problems the Rwanda bill is facing. The Sky News reporter pushed back somewhat, but missed two vital pieces of information. Have a listen to this. A record number of migrants have crossed the channel in small boats this year. New figures today uh, show. Does this government have a grip on the UK border? Well, I think it's very important to remember, Sophie, that the government's introduced a wide range of measures. So one of them was to do a deal with France, which saw 26,000 fewer small boat vessels cross the English Channel last year. We also know that returns agreements with places like Albania led towards a 36% reduction in small boat numbers arrivals over the entire course of 2023 compared to the 2022 year as well. I really wish the journalist would say, well, sorry, Jonathan, did you not hear the question that I raised? Did you not hear the point that I raised? I said that numbers are going up. You're talking about numbers coming down. Did you not hear me? But there is one big rabbit, oh, elephant, sorry, I should say, Sophie, in the room, which the is right the fact animal. that we have, I know, get the right animal, which is the fact that we have a very clear plan to get people deported to Rwanda, because if you enter this country illegally, you will not be able to claim asylum. But those pesky peers in the House of Lords, predominantly Labour, and Labour MPs and Sir Keir Starmer in the House of Commons are continuing to block any attempts that we make in order to get this Rwanda policy off the ground, because one, it will act as an effective deterrent, but you need it as with all the other measures to make you, sure that you, you have that you, plans. You abstained the Rwanda vote, didn't you? Well, actually, I voted in favour of the National and Borders Act and voted for the Illegal Migration Act. And with the Rwanda bill, what I made very clear was that I wanted to see the bill pass. So I didn't block or deter it at any point. But you, I you also suggested some amendments. You? Well, I suggested amendments, Sophie, and obviously that's a matter of public record. Did, that you, everyone did you abstain or not on the Rwanda bill? I, uh, Sophie, that's a matter of public record. But I did choose to abstain on that particular bill. So but you're I didn't one block. of the pesky, you can't blame I'm the like pesky Labour peers. You didn't I vote for actually, either. Sophie, I can actually, Sophie, because at the end of the day, I haven't voted like Labour have over 90 times to block the Rwanda scheme from being able to take place. You I actually. Abstain <laughs> you abstained, you idiot. Do you not know the difference between abstaining for something and voting for it? This guy is an idiot, okay? He's actually dumber than I thought. But maybe he's not. See, in the past, uh, Jonathan Gullis was a bit of a rebel. Now he seems to be a fully signed up member of the Conservative Party because perhaps he's been made deputy chair of the Conservative Party. The, you know, And just think about that for a moment. Jonathan Gull is deputy chair of the Conservative Party. We thought it was really scraping the bottom of the barrel with Lee Anderson. But there seems to be something even further down the bottom of that barrel. Now, the main points missed here, of course, sadly by Sophie Ridge, is that numbers are actually going up, not coming down. And second, Labour don't have a majority in the House of Commons. Keir Starmer can't block your legislation. He can't block these bills because he doesn't have the frigging numbers. If he had a majority, then he would be prime minister. He doesn't have a majority. Now, either Jonathan Gullis doesn't understand this, which is perhaps possible, or he wants the public to believe this, which of course is dishonest. And this should be called out by the media, but sometimes it's not for some reason. But also... The Conservatives have a majority in the House of Lords. So, for example, there are about 270 Tory peers. There are about 175 Labour peers. And there are 184 crossbenchers. So, obviously, the Tories have a majority there. So you can't blame the Labour Party in the House of Commons because they don't have a majority. And you can't blame the, the Labour Party in the House of Lords because they don't have a majority there either. You have to blame Tory peers. But he won't do that because they're, of course, the Tory party. So he's not going to blame his own party. But there are Tory peers who are not complete and utter headbangers who realise that the Rwanda bill is insane. You can't legislate to say that Rwanda is safe. Rwanda was not safe. The Tories decided it's now safe. 
Although they didn't say before that it wasn't safe, <laughs> which is in another insane point to raise. They never said at one stage, oh, no, it's actually not safe. They always said, it, it is safe, it's always safe. But now we're going to legislate to make sure it's safe. <laughs> okay, that doesn't make any sense. And nothing has changed. The, of course, the reason the, the Tory peers are up in arms over this is because also because of the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court have said that Rwanda is not safe. And they don't want to go against the Supreme Court. So they're caught between reality and the Conservative Party. Now, I don't think they're going to push back to an extent that it, they will block the bill. It will eventually pass. But it's insane. It can't be implemented because it doesn't act within reality. So Jonathan Gull has abstained when he was a rebel, but now he's he's backing the plan because he's the deputy chair of the Conservative Party. So he doesn't actually have any morals or any um, pos real position on anything. But that's not really a surprise. I wonder how long he will remain as deputy chair of the Conservative Party. Is he going to insult Sadiq Khan or something like that? Let me know in the comment section, guys, what you think. As always, your comments are greatly appreciated. Thanks a lot.